Hello everyone. How's it going? Happy January, if you're watching this when it's being recorded. Um, I wanted to hop on here today uh, because this is a time of year when a lot of people, at least in the circles that I run in, are planning their trips for um, the coming year ahead. So they're thinking through like the backcountry adventures they want to do, whether it's um, like backpacking trips or I don't know, like um, rafting trips or things like that. Um, so today I wanted to talk about the process that I go through every year to prepare myself physically for backcountry trips that I want to do in the coming year. Um, and if you caught my video last week in the Holistic Health Adventure Group where this is originally being recorded, um, I did an exercise on adventure prep and like narrowing down your adventures to um, the ones that you wanted to do that year. So if you haven't watched that and you're having trouble narrowing down what you want to do, um, it has some good exercises in there. And then, excuse me, <coughs> today's, <clears throat> today's video is going to be about, um, yeah, how I prepare my health. And this conversation, this. this conversation and the idea for it was really sparked by some emails I've received recently. There we go. Um, <clears throat> from some other backpackers and aspiring hikers who had heard my story on like podcasts or from my blog about being a long distance hiker with an autoimmune condition. And they shared that it was really expansive for them and reassuring for them because it's not really like the typical image that we see of like the backpacker who's out there crushing it and you don't think, oh, that person has a chronic health condition that they have to manage um, through diet and lifestyle to be able to be out there doing the thing that they love. So that's what I wanna talk about today um, because yeah, I really appreciated getting those messages. It was um, yeah, just like really happy to hear that sharing my story was helpful to them. And so I wanna talk about how I actually do that and how I prepare my health to go out and do this every year um, because it's something that I have to work at. Um, I no longer take for granted like my health or my energy or my endurance or anything like that. I'm very intentional about it. Um, and it's, it's simple, it's not necessarily easy. It takes some work to do this, but um, it's very effective and it's worth it to me to be intentional about my health choices. Um, so if you're someone, and if you're watching this and you're someone who doesn't have like a chronic health condition or anything like that, I invite you to continue watching because these strategies that I'm about to share are things that anyone with a human body can do to become more strong and resilient and healthy before they're going into a big backcountry adventure. Um, these are health habits, um, ways of being that are going to support you in feeling and living your best and, you know, continuing to adventure into your older years. Um, and if you're somebody who does have health challenges, um, I know it can be frustrating to have to like work so hard at being healthy to do the thing that you love. And something that I like to share with my clients is like reframing that challenge into an opportunity to get to know their body better and to take care of it better. Um, and that's something that has served me. So here are the things that I think about and take action on. Um, all throughout the year, but I really double down on them in January when I'm planning my adventures and thinking about how my body is going to be prepared for the season ahead. So the first one is to master your mindset. And this is something that um, I think about with all the things that I'm trying to accomplish in my life. It's like, where is my mindset? What exactly is my goal and the outcome that I'm going for? So in the case of what we're talking about, like what adventures do I want to go on this year? What is that going to require of me? And um, yeah, like what am I trying to accomplish and what obstacles might get in the way? And I, so I think about like what I'm trying to accomplish, why it matters to me, because the why helps you get through those challenging obstacles. And then, yeah, what are those obstacles that might prevent me on following through, whether it's like lack of knowledge or skills or health, as the case we're talking about right now. It's like, how can I get my health ready? Or yeah, what, what might pop up that might prevent me from doing this thing that I really want to do? So that's really the first part of it is like starting from a mindset place of what do I want to do like get clear on the goal why does it matter to me and then what what obstacles might I encounter and how can I either prevent those or overcome them because I think when you oh I know that when you are expecting those obstacles and you prepare yourself for them mentally or do the things to 
you know, prevent them from happening, it makes it a lot easier to get where you want to go. Uh, and the second thing that I do is to take inventory of where things are at with my nutrition and I tighten things up if needed. So it's really easy for things to like slip. Um, so I know that pushing myself physically is going to put demands on my body. It's, it's going to like draw on my nutrient reserves and it's going to kind of like wear my body down. And so I want to be eating foods that fuel me and help me meet those demands. Um, and I don't believe, if you like watch my work, I don't believe that there's one right diet for everyone. But what I do think is important is reducing sources of inflammation in the diet, eating a diet that limits glycemic variability. So what I mean by that is like large swings in blood sugar, eating macronutrient ratios that are appropriate for my body and my goals and my activity level. Um, and so during the winter, I take inventory of where things are at with like the nutrition that I'm currently eating, you know, the diet that I currently have. It's not like a diet per se, but like, what am I doing in my diet? What does my day look like? Um, where have things slipped? And, um, you know, where am I consuming things that I know aren't really serving my goals? Like, uh, am I consuming extra coffee, which, um, you know, stresses my adrenals and ultimately like messes up my energy? Or my, have I, you know, let extra sugar or processed food slip into my diet? Or, um, you know, have I started consuming a lot of dairy, which for me is something that I only tolerate in limited amounts and which I know is causing inflammation in my body and preventing me to perform at my peak. So I take an inventory of all that stuff. And then, um, you know, I take action on that. I start like um, either like removing things or kind of cleaning things up or kind of just like resetting things with my nutrition so that my body is um, low in inflammation and has my nutrient stores topped up so that I'm optimally healthy when it comes to getting outside and really putting those demands on my body. Um, so again, I'm looking at like the specific foods mm -hmm. and macronutrient ratios that are correct for me and I invite you to do the same for you. Um, and what's right for you will be unique to you. Um, but this is a great time of year to find out what foods are good for your body or what work for your body and what don't and how to eat for lower inflammation and better energy endurance. The third thing I do is really to um, prioritize like rest and restoration and sleep. So I push myself really hard during the summer. I'm like getting after it as often as I can. Um, outside just like trying to summit mountains or go on long hikes or do other things that really push my body so during the like sort of like off season or during the winter is when I have a chance to really catch up on rest and repair and the body needs that in the same way that like nature has its cycles of like high output and high activity like in the spring and in the summer where things are blooming and like reproduction is happening and like everything's green and blooming out there's also a season like a fallow season where things are dying and um like there's just not as much output and there's this season of like downtime of rest before the cycle starts again and i think of my life that way so i don't feel bad about like resting more during the winter or letting my body recover during the winter because i know that prepares me to push hard again in the coming spring and summer and fall. Um, so one of the best ways I do this is um, by allowing myself to sleep as much as I need to sleep in the winter um, because sleep is just, it's such a powerful way for your body to like heal and repair itself. It has many benefits including like metabolic health, um, you'll have fewer cravings when you sleep well, less brain fog, less anxiety, just like less stress on your body um, it helps you, your hormones balance themselves out. There's like cognitive benefits, like better memory. So many good things come from getting good sleep. And this time of year is a great time of year to let yourself catch up on that. Um, and even rest in the sense of like maybe um, not pushing your workouts as hard, like periodizing your workouts so that you're like pushing more um, before your big activities and letting this season be one where your body is repairing a little more. Um, so that is what I have for you about um, the topic of like rest and repair. So that's something that um, is one of the pillars that I focus on, especially in the winter, because it helps me prepare myself for the season ahead. Um, and I cover all of like my top sleep tips in my course Adventure Ready. Um, but if I could give you one quick tip today on this video, I would say if you're having trouble with sleep, one thing I invite you to do is to get outside first thing each morning for at least 10 minutes in natural daylight um, to help reset your circadian rhythm. So there's a natural um, uh, rhythm of cortisol and melatonin throughout the day. So cortisol is supposed to peak in the morning, go down at night, and it melatonin, which is then supposed to come up in the night and then 
go down towards morning when cortisol rises again to help you wake up and um, getting exposing your eyes to natural daylight especially in the morning and throughout the day as much as possible is going to help you reset that rhythm and help sleep come a lot much, much easier for you the fourth thing i do is to evaluate all the sources of stress in my life and um, eliminate them or double down on stress i should say and double down on like stress reduction practices um, so why am i talking about stress does it matter that much? It really does matter that much. Um, this is something I ignored for a long time, despite all the research um, of, of the impact on, of stress on your health and well-being. I like, continue to downplay the impact of it in my life, and this really held me back from being as healthy as I possibly could. And I still notice it's the thing that I tend to ignore the most. I'm like, oh, I'm not really stressed. And so that's why I do like a stress inventory in the same way I do with my diet, for example. And I look at any potential stressors in my life. Um, so things like dietary triggers, which we touched on a little bit. Um, lack of sleep could be a stressor. Overtraining could be a stressor. And then, of course, like the mental, emotional stressors. We commonly think about like um, whether it's financial stress or relationships or work or whatever that is for you. Um, I take inventory of these things because stress can really cause um, like hormone, hormonal disruptions, systemic inflammation impacts cognitive function, your digestive, like gastrointestinal function, cardiovascular system, it really does have like wide ranging impacts over your whole body. And you're gonna be able to perform much better um, if you identify your sources of stress and then take measures to um, either eliminate those things or mitigate it, or um, as I mentioned, like double down on stress redu reduction practices, which sounds complicated, but it could be super simple, like what what brings you joy, you know? So for me, it would mean like getting out into nature, going hiking, um, going to the hot springs, listening to music, spending time with friends, any of those things I consider stress reduction practices. It's just being really intentional about it. Um, breath work, yoga, meditation, those are all options. So I invite you this time of year to take inventory of your stress and see where you can reduce it because it really does have a big impact on your physical health and how well you're able to perform. And then the last thing I want to mention is, of course, a physical training plan. And I'm mentioning this last not because it doesn't matter, it absolutely matters, but if um, all of the above is also not in place, even a good training plan is only going to take you so far. Like You're not going to get as much out of it if you're not eating the right nutrition, if you're under rested. So like training and um, like active training and recovery are both essential for like becoming physically ready for something for like um, building muscle and physical fitness improvement um so that's the last one i tend to maintain like a pretty decent base level of fitness year round through um, hiking or running or yoga or whatever it is um but this is the time of year when i really take inventory of like where i'm at now which as i mentioned i'm kind of more in like a rest phase right now and then like how do i want to ramp things up and i identify what that is whether that's including more um like hit workouts or I really love to start adding like elevation gain in to help me prepare for hiking season. And I will identify where I'm at, what the things are that I want to improve, and I want to like schedule it into my calendar. And I don't go crazy and like go from like zero to 100 um, right away. I build up slowly, right? That's like key to a training plan is, well, there's lots of keys to it, like um, sport specificity and like muscular endurance and cardiovascular training, but building up low, like starting, it's like low and slow and then like building up from there. And so that's sort of the last thing I'm thinking about is like creating this physical training plan. So those are really the foundations. As I mentioned, it's not like some sort of complex strategy. It's these simple strategies. It's really, it's like, I just call them the pillars of health. Um, it's the, the training, the nutrition, the sleep. Um, gut health is one I throw in there. I kind of like consider that part of training, but like gut health is super important. Um, and then yeah, where is my mindset at is the last one. So I hope that was helpful for you. I hope it gives you some ideas for um, what you can be doing to get ready for your own adventures this year, or use it as a starting point, a jumping off point to like create your own wellness plan, your own like health and body preparation plan, because I'm sure you have big backcountry adventures planned for yourself this year, big goals as I do. Um, and if you want support with this and you want like an exact framework step-by-step -step for how to implement the, 
implement this in your life, this is exactly what the Adventure Ready course is. Um, it's an online course that I offer and it's based around these principles. It's based on exactly what I did when I found out I first had an autoimmune condition and then I, I implemented, like I created a strategy basically of like how am I going to be able to continue doing what I love, what do I need to do for my health so that I can keep my symptoms at bay um, and get out and go on these long distance hikes and hike big miles. And so this is what I came up with. It's the same, um, a very similar framework as what I use with my private clients and their coaching, but obviously it's like customized for them. Um, but it's a step-by-step -step plan for how to get your health completely ready for um, whatever backcountry adventures you have this year. And there's I believe six modules, takes you step-by-step, -step, worksheets where you can put things into action, a Facebook community where you can ask questions and connect with other people who are in the program, like-minded individuals. Um, and really get yourself ready for the trips that you have planned this year because um, not having the physical health can be a big concern. And even if you're already in a pretty good spot with where your health and your fitness is at, um, it can, like there can always be room for improvement. Like the better you feel, the more enjoyable the time outdoors becomes. And you know, you're a lot less prone to like injury and, or re-injury or even illness. Um, and you can go farther and enjoy yourself more. So. I will drop the link for that course below uh, the video today in the comment section. And yeah, I invite you to check it out. And if you have any questions, shoot me a message. This, um, this is a really great time of year to go through this program. And I'm going to be going through it again right now because um, yeah, like I said, it's exactly the thing I, I do each year um, and redo each year before I go out and I wanna plan my adventures and go feel great on them. So I hope this was helpful for you. Happy adventure preparation, and I will see you next time.